Hi, everyone. It's Arthur here at Arthur Ease Your Mind on YouTube and ArthurEaseYourMind.com. And tonight I have the one and only Chicago's best Aloha Shirt Psychic, Mel Dore. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Should we call this Aloha Tuesdays? Oh, I like that. Yeah, why not? Good for you. Very creative. Aloha Tuesdays. Yay. We like, we like. I'll start to have to get a Hawaiian shirt then. Glad you thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> we could wear a lay. Don't go there. I'm not. I'm not. My lighting is all off. I don't know what's wrong. You look fine. Yeah. I seem like <laughs> I seem kind of dark here too, but it's okay. For once in my life, right? No. Okay. I gotta get another ring light, but anyway. Okay. So <laughs> here we are. Hello, people. So I only have one quick announcement to make. I added memberships. How many? I had I added membership to my Yay. You can become a member. Good. So just click on I have an explainer video and you take it from there. I'm gonna start a membership drive too. I've got I forget how many members I've got, but mm. start a membership drive. Uh, and I have room for one person left on my Africa trip. Just one. Still that one? One. <laughs> and I've got openings on my Rhine River tour. So, And if people want to get a hold of you for readings and bookings for trips and all that, it's meldor.com? Uh, uh, www.meldor.com. And phone and number? They can call my office at 847 Five nine zero five four one one or better eight four seven five nine zero five four one one. Arthur and I do our um our computer voices though. Yeah, whatever you said. Uh so it's www.meldoer.com eight four seven five nine zero five four one one. And also get a get a reading with mel he's terrific and get one with arthur how do they con can they call you oh they can but um it's all through it's better through email though i mean through my website www.arthureaseyourmind.com um but if they want to call me that's 310-494-5955 but that's to make an appointment. That's not to ask a psychic question. Correct. Correct. Because then I, I will just, people have called and said, what? Make an appointment. Um, I see an appointment in your future. <laughs> <laughs> I see a booking in your future. There you go. Not that, not a criminal booking, but. Booking no, no. Like, I mean, like maybe like Africa. Ooh, yeah. And my offer still stands. Whoever gets that last, last seat, they get a reading with me. Yay. Thank okay. you. All righty. So what do you got over there? <laughs> a, lot a, lot of, a lot of crap's been hitting the fan. Well, yeah. you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, as we both know, the Senate is waiting to see what the House did. Well, the House did impeach Mayorkas. Or voted to impeach him. Yeah, and voted to impeach him at 214 to 213. And three Republicans sided with the Democrats not to impeach. I my guides are telling me that um, the Senate's not going to find him guilty because he hasn't done anything wrong, mm -hmm. and it's going to bite them where the sun doesn't shine. In uh, the third eye. Thank you, thank you. The MAGAs, um, and you know they're setting a dangerous precedent because that means if we don't like you, we'll just vote to impeach you. And I see future legislation coming down the pike to say, wait a minute, you just can't vote to impeach somebody willy-nilly. Here's Here are the criteria that you have to use, mm -hmm. you know, outlining what, what is high crimes and misdemeanors or whatever. Exactly. So actually, they, you know, it's an election year and they want to make Biden and the Dems look bad, but... Um, you know, I'll protect us from invasion. It's not like some foreign government is invading with tanks. These are people who want a better way of life who are crossing the border. That's not an invasion. No, <laughs> it's it's their signs of hope coming here. 
Thank you. What does the Statue of Liberty say? Give me your tired, your poor, your wretched. Okay. And you know, uh, if 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 what if you know if they were going to start mass deportations, well, guess what? My ancestry would have been the first on my dad's side to get deported because they were from Germany. So, um, what about Melania? Uh, yeah, right. On her um, genius, they got to be careful because they're Reason? setting they're setting a dangerous precedent, mm -hmm. and it's going to bite them in the butt. So. Right. Well, it's like when Trump is saying, "Oh, blame the border on me." Well, and Biden said, "Okay, <laughs> okay." Well, Trump, it's clear that Trump is controlling the preacher Johnson. Oh, yeah. And it's clear to me that Trump is running the House and probably trying to run the Senate as well. well but isn't it, but here's the deal, though. Isn't it up to Schumer to decide whether or not he wants to bring it to the Senate floor? He doesn't have to bring it to the Senate floor. What, the Mayorkas? Yes, yes right. he does. But it's a procedural thing. He does have to bring it to the floor. But he doesn't have to bring it tomorrow. Correct. That's right. But and, it's a procedural um, thing that they have to go through. That's all it is. Right. But and but don't I mean waste of time. But don't they have to have like two thirds of a vote to of, of a vote to impeach somebody to get them out of office? Well, yes. they'll, they'll never get it. No. It's and you know, just, in a way, I hope it. I hope they do have a trial in the Senate because what's going to happen is going to make these Republican, not all Republicans, because there's some nice Republicans, but to make these MAGAs look completely ludicrous. Right. Right. So, and the Yorkers will do very well with. He'll have some really good lawyers. Well, he's he's also been working nonstop in a bipartisan way. It's just that there's a little group of Republicans that put through a bill, HR2, a while back, that the Senate hasn't looked at because it's so draconian. And then they're saying, well, Biden won't work with us. It's like, yeah, he said, this sucks. Let, let's do something else. Well, it's even their way or no way is how they read this. Biden gave them everything they wanted. Trump would say, say no. Yeah. And the thing that the thing that bothers me is they're they're impeaching Mayorkas, but yet. They're the ones that are stalling. They're the ones that are doing the obstructionist um, right. tactics. So what is, you know, the hypocrisy. So is that grounds to impeach them? <laughs> you would think. And I think, you know, turnabout's fair play. But I think at some point there's going to be some House members that are going to be impeached. If not impeached, I feel indicted. I see impeached. By Jack Smith. Uh, well, Jack Smith will have something on him, yeah. but I also see impeached by the Democrats or in the independents. Well, if they're indicted, that means there's, and they're found guilty, that's a crime and misdemeanor. They could be then impeached. That's my case. However, and it's not going to be payback that the Democrats, are gonna, even with the Republicans, but then the Republican, not all, the MAGAs will scream, how can you do this? Well, look what you did to Mayorkas. But I knew, I knew that Abbott was working with those people in Trump because when he, those, you know, when he said, oh, we're under invasion and we have the right to defend ourselves from invaders, you know, according to the Texas Constitution, I think they mean invasion as like foreign an army. Right, an army. And so I knew that it was trying to a set up to try to impeach Mayorkas and then maybe Biden. But you know what? It was a litmus test and it's going to blow up in their faces. Well, there was also a group of MAGAs that, oh, we're going to go protect the border. And they went in their in their little caravan and then they got there's like, where is everybody? Nobody was there. <laughs> Invasion. I think a lot of this crisis at the border is is, you know, Donald Trump hype and media hype because. Well, there's always a border crisis right before an election. If there's a border crisis, it's a humanitarian crisis because they lock people up and put them in cages. Yeah. Thank you, so, Steve Miller. Right. <laughs> Entertainment purposes only. Anyway. So what do you think about the um, Biden urging the House to take up Ukraine bill? Because he's saying it's playing into Putin's hands and then Trump turning around saying, well, if I were in charge, I let Russia do whatever they want. 
Well, he said if the NATO countries didn't pay up, then he will let Putin invade. Yeah. And so Biden slammed Trump and said, uh, it's shameful, dumb. He said it's shameful, dumb, and un-American. Uh, so at least the Democrats are starting to speak up in the independents. Um, I think that a lot of people got scared by that statement. Um, the 60 yeah. billion for Ukraine, I think there's some kind of, if, if Johnson doesn't bring it to the House floor, I think there's a way they can step around. I've always them. said Biden has his ways. He's I think guy. there's a way they can step around the House yeah. and get passed because I've always, I've always seen money coming from Ukraine. So. Yeah, I do too. I've never seen it stop. But I think Biden's going to issue an executive order about the border. That's what I see. And then it's like giving the middle finger to Trump and the MAGAs in the House to say, wait a minute, I can pass an executive order to close the border. And I think that's what he's going to do. I wouldn't be surprised because he's always been underestimated. How much do you want to bet if Biden gave an executive order to close the border? How much do you want to bet that the MAGA Republicans say he closed the border? He it's can't. American. Right. No matter what he does. Here's um, a rock. Here's a hard place. Right. Um, so I know what draconian means, but maybe some people don't. So do you want to define draconian? Well, when I don't know exactly everything that was in HR2, but it, when I was hearing about it, it was more or less like going back to the days of, oh, we're going to grab your child. It That's draconian. Draconian means harsh. Yes. I think it came from a, I think the, the word came from, there was a Roman leader or something called Draco, or I forget, but he was very like harsh and oof. And so I think the word draconian came from that. Wasn't that a character in Harry Potter? Just kidding. Draco? I forgot the Roman ruler. I know. All right, but you brought you know, up. You've been around so long, you forget these things. I'm sorry. I just you forget when you were a kid and that was going on, right? So, talk to me about Chief Justice Clarence Thomas. What about him? When you well before the show, you were telling me that Clarence Thomas. No, 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 no. And Hump Chief Chief Justice Roberts. Well, Oh, Roberts. I thought you said Thomas. Chief no. Justice Roberts. So what happened with that? Well, Trump took the immunity thing that he's immune in infinitum for whatever he does that the D.C. court held was not the case. The appellate court said no. And the three judges were really stern about it. No one has is above the law. So they said, if you want to appeal this to have all the justices read on it, we can do that. But then we're going to give it right back to Judge Chuck and start forward, move forward. However, if you want, you can take, you have one week, you can take it to the Supreme Court and see if they want to put a stay on it. And that's what he did. Now, Roberts turned around this morning and gave Jack Smith one week to respond to Trump's request to stay the election. I don't see them doing that. I don't I see don't them either. putting in a hold at all. So, so Roberts was being fair, in other words. Mm -hmm. You know, I I mean, the only one that I think might vote or might say that Trump is not immune would be Clarence Thomas. But I think the rest of the justices, they're already indicating that that well, I mean, Kavanaugh and Gorsuch supposedly are, you know, you know, they go by the Constitution, by the word, you know. So, well, but course. here again, nobody's immune from prosecution. With a little blow, exactly prosecution, and I could tell by the questions some of them were asking that uh, he's not going to get immunity. No way. No. Well, he's just trying to delay it because he thinks if he's going to win. And if he does, he he thinks he, he can, can change the laws and become our but, king. Well, that's hard to do. You have to have like two thirds vote to change the laws. But, you know, if he tried to pardon himself, that would go to the Supreme Court because that would be like saying, oh, a president went out and murdered 10 people, robbed five banks, you know, um, uh, committed all kinds of securities fraud. But that's OK, because 
that person's a president, they can't be mm -hmm. prosecuted. That and won't hold. Don't forget adultery. Oh, I forgot. Well, that's not <laughs> silly little things. But uh, sexual harassment is. Yes. Yes. Okay. And that's, he's still going to court on the 25th for the St Stormy Daniels case. He wasn't able to get that delayed. Okay. What about Santos's seat? Who, who do you, I'm predicting a Democrat winning. Yes. I feel it's going to go to uh, Tom Swozy, who had the position for three terms. The only reason why he stepped down was so that he could run against, uh, what's her name, uh, Kathy Holcomb or Holich, whatever her name, the Democrat of New York, the governor. He was running against her, and of course he lost. Now he wants his old job back. He'll but, get a bit. But the gal that's running against him, she was... She's a Nassau County legislator who grew up in Ethiopia, emigrated to Israel and served in the Israeli Defense Forces, was a registered Democrat for 10 years, then was elected as a GOP Nassau County legislator in 2021 and flipped the Democratic seat. I still think she was probably a Republican and Democrats clothing, but um, I don't I, know. I see a Democrat winning. I see. I, I see Swosey getting it. It's going to be tight. I, I wins, I'm surprised if there's if not a. Wins, uh, not, if she wins, she's not going to tell the MAGA line. I can tell you that right now. But I, what I'm seeing here is though, it's going to be a tight race. I feel there will be a recount, but also there's a huge snowstorm today, you know, for them to vote. And usually, when that happens, the Republicans don't show up. Well, let's just hope. But I, but uh, so that means if she wins, then there's only a two-seat lead in the House, right? Mm -hmm. So why do you think that it's going to turn to Democrat? Uh, that means two people would have to leave. Well, I'm still seeing people read other people out there in, in Republican land leaving by the end of the year for one reason or another. Wait, by the end of the year, though, that would be after the election. Well, I'm going to say before the election, put it that way. Well, if they leave, but don't you think they would know that that would upset the balance of the, that would turn the balance of the it house? May, I don't, I'm just repeating what I'm hearing. Okay. I don't know. That's what they tell me. I'm I'm being devil's advocate. I just repeat what I'm, what I hear. I feel I'm, the same thing. I'm a little I parrot, you know. I feel the same. I feel the same way. I see the same things. All right. So we've got some questions. Yes. From Harriet Smith, do you ever see a time when Trump will lose his secret service? Love you guys. Love you back. I don't do, I don't know if the presidents get secret service forever. Yeah, they do. They do. Well, I see a time when it's seriously cut down and um I don't think he's going to go to jail, but when he's found guilty, I wonder, you know, are taxpayers going to fund Secret Service to protect his rear end in jail? No, he won't need to. Be, they won't need them because they'll be prison guards. Well, <laughs> here's um, a shiv. Um, um, here's a cake. Here's a. Here's a well, I don't like, like President Carter and President Bush. They still have Secret Service protection. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um and a great pension well yeah but i'm sure that um i just i just don't you know there might be a few agents assigned but it's not going to be yeah it's not like it's not like a whole you know right it's not like a whole whole football field correct so uh anyway but anyway, that's I, what i see yeah i feel there'll be a time when they aren't around um, Angelic Alchemy. Happy Mardi Gras and early Valentine's Day. Arthur and Mel sending love and blessings to both. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please look into Laura Trump becoming the NRC co-chairman, replacing Ronnie, Rona McDaniel? I can't help but laugh because this way all the money will be funneling to 45 and there won't be any money left to help the MAGA GOP candidates. Thank you. All right. So re, re, I'm sorry. Re, re, say that again. Can you please look into Laura Trump 
becoming the RNC co-chairman, replacing Rona McDaniel. I can't help but laugh because this way, all the money will be funneling to 45 and there won't be any money left to help the MAGA GOP candidates. Well, at some point, once um, Trump is out of office, um, well, he's not in office. I Now, who appointed her to the head of the RNC? No, she's not been appointed yet, but it's it, her name has been floated. Well, you know she'll get it, obviously. Actually, no, but Trump also gave it. He uh, also put out there a Michael Watley, the chairman of the North Carolina's Republican Party, has been named also by Donald Trump. She'll get it. But she'll be like, I don't know how long they're the co chair or whatever. Whatever. She, she won't hold it long. I don't think she's done anything illegal, but yet some her siblings have. And yeah, well, uh, it's her father in law. But, but the thing is, as someone said, oh, good, she gets in. This is going to be just like North Korea. <laughs> well, it's, I think there, though, at some point, there are going to be investigations against her husband. <laughs> And uh, her too. And so at some point, um, I see her out of that position. Right. Uh, if, I think if, she, if she goes, it's short lived. I think she's trying to position herself for a political run somewhere, but it's not going to work. That's what I pick up. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tammy Walker. Hello, Arthur and Mel. Do y'all see the election going to the Supreme Court? Thanks. From Southern Middle Tennessee. The election going to the Supreme Court. In other words, I think the um, what the way I take Well, if this, Trump loses, he's going to take it to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court will uphold mm -hmm. the winner. Yeah. <laughs> Trump's going to once again voter fraud, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Same playbook. You know, he needs a different, he needs to write a different script. <laughs> Donald, there's no hanging chads. There's no what? Hanging chads. Remember Florida with the hanging chads? That's why Bush got in? Right. That's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's an interesting one. Stargazing gal. It's wonderful to have you two together again. Thank you. Well, we're going to be a regular on Tuesdays on Tuesday nights. Aloha Tuesday. Aloha Tuesday. <laughs> There hasn't been much news about Pope Francis lately. How do you see his health doing? Well, I think he's in a wheelchair. Um, I don't think he's ready to give up yet. But, you know, after he's gone, I, I really love this Pope. But I think after he's gone, uh, there's going to be a Pope that um, is not going to be super conservative. I think more liberal minded. And I see a third Vatican council being called. Right. It's tremendous reform coming in the church again. So I like that actually. I think I think it's time for that to happen. So because I think this Pope has made it a church for the people and the ones of us who are marginalized, like LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. so I don't think he'll pass over tomorrow at 2 30, but his health is not good. But I see the next Pope, actually, they'll think he'll be a do-nothing Pope. And he's gonna, he's gonna, <clears throat> he'll do a lot, a lot of good things for the church. I see a third Vatican council. Good, kind of like he'll be an underdog and always come out forward like Biden. But right. I don't see any white smoke soon. I'm sorry. I don't see any white white smoke anytime soon. No, 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 no. It's not tomorrow. It's just somebody vaping. That's all. <laughs> Um, Mystic Teresa, I enjoy watching you both. Thank you. What are your thoughts on Ted Cruz? How will he do this November? And Marco Rubio. I've often seen Ted Cruz gone. Um, I just want to pull those chops. He looks like a billy goat. <laughs> um, and Marco Rubio, I think his career is his political career, career, his political career. That's it. Um, is pretty washed up, I think. The way I read it is, if Ted Cruz gets in, 
it's because of a lot of dark money and shenanigans. That's the only way he can get in. It's because Paxson will just miss a bunch of votes like he did before. Yeah. And Marco Rubio, stay in Florida. It's a sinking ship. Exactly. <laughs> well, to say no being gone. Okay. Not soon enough. <laughs> Not and a lot of the enough. things that he put into place, like banning books and all that stuff, and you know, got in bed with the insurance companies so that they don't have to pay claims like for hurricanes. Uh, and um, or if they do, they're this much, maybe 25,000. But the premiums are so costly, people can't afford it. People are moving out of Florida. Yeah. Not looking good for the Satan. I've, I think I mentioned this before. I have a client. Her insurance is more than her mortgage and car payment put together. Yes. The, yeah. I, you told me that. That's right. That's right. That's ridiculous. It's crazy. Uh, I think that's craziness. Yeah. Valderay. Trump was at a Florida skiff site Monday. What is skiff? You know, where they can read the um, top secret documents. I forget what the the what it stands for. It's it's a special room where you can only read the uh classified documents. Didn't Biden, but hold on, didn't Biden uh remove his security clearance? Yes, he did. But Judge Cannon had written that one of these files had to be shown to Trump's people that Jack Smith had. And a lot of it contained some information that is not really for the public to see. And so at the last minute, um, Cannon did say, okay, well, but he has to do it. So he did. I mean, it was by court order. He only had one day to do it. He couldn't, he couldn't respond to it. But I am saying that as far as Judge Cannon, by the end of this month, we'll know her demise. If she's not gone by the end of February, we know she's going to do something. It's going to go to the 11th court and she's going to be recused. That's what I see. It's like she's going to make some rulings that are just not kosher, if you will. And and Jack Smith is going to um, appeal it. One upper. And she's going to be admonished by the appeals court. I don't know if they can cause her to recuse herself, but he's going to come forth with evidence to say there's a conflict here. And so I see her recused. Now that brings up a point, though. Does that mean the trial starts all over? Or is that a mistrial? Or no, not, it, no if you just replace the judge, judge has to catch up with stuff. But I don't feel that much. I mean, there's a lay around it anyway, thanks to Judge Cannon. So, right. but regardless of when this is going to be seen, I still feel that Jan 6 goes first. January fix. I feel we'll know a date by the end of this month. End of, I mean, end of March, uh, when I think it's early spring or sometime in spring, that they'll start. Indict. And let's don't forget Jordan. And it's all before the election and let's don't forget georgia that's going to be before the election that's august right. yeah but they're so, also trying to somebody was asking about that too um, i don't think he got the name of the witnesses but if he did and he releases those names to the public he's going to be in deep trouble well there was one what i, I believe there's one person on there that they showed that had been threatened and if any way after seeing this name, if Trump comes out or any of his cronies or anybody starts going after this person more, then they know. It's I feel it's a trap. Then they know what's going on here. It is a trap. You're right. I just heard a yes, and I got cold chills. You know, you you had said that um, that uh, Jack Smith was playing 3D chess, and I said no, multi-dimensional, Multi multi-dimensional, yeah. He's thinking a gazillion steps ahead of loose cannon. She's not that smart. Um, but I I see somebody like, I don't know if it's one of her assistants or whatever, coming forward and say that she had meetings with Trump and his lawyers, you know. Um, ex parte? I don't know what ex parte means. Quietly, behind back, everyone's back. Yeah, but they're going to come forward to say that they suggested and pretty much 
told her how to rule on certain things and she did. So that means that, you know, they would be guilty of tampering with a judge and she would be guilty of doing what they wanted for whatever reason. Extortion. Uh, but, well, but, but the, the thing, thing also is, is hold, hold, just let me, but the thing is, I see her under investigation at some point yeah. and I see her under indictment. So <laughs> why is you gone? I don't see her with a great career. And um, I forgot what I was going to say before, but anyway, she's. It, it, I think Trump has told her if I'm elected president or some of his lawyers, somebody said it, that I'm going to make her the chief justice or I'm going to make her. I'm going to go to the 11th circuit or she'll go here or she'll go there. Um, what I was going to say is you know, no, Trump think... is showing up to some of these hearings that he doesn't have to show up to. But I feel it's all intimidation. Correct. But I think he's told her that she would be on the Supreme oh. Empty promises, yeah, right. yeah, and just don't step off the curb because here comes the bus. And I think it's pretty amazing that how was she picked in Florida? They say it's by lotto, but I got a funny feeling somebody had sticky fingers and put her name at the top of the list, <laughs> yeah, or someone put laxatives in somebody's soda and they weren't around to do anything. There you go, yeah, I feel there's something underhanded about it, but still, I don't see her around. I don't either. Pulling on this. Yay. <laughs> and I still see Jack Smith's Jan 6 going. And the funny will, if somebody asked here, uh, Vela, Velda right. Ray, will DA Fonnie Willis be removed from the Trump election interference case? I no. see. Nope. Because she can date whoever she wants. Mm -hmm. It might... It, it you know that didn't conflict conflict the um lead prosecutor out i mean and it's funny somebody's gonna come out and say that uh the trump people got to the lead prosecutor i forget his name but to his ex-wife who cheated on him by the way oh yeah yeah and off and paid her the it's guy gonna, the guy roman yeah i forget his first name one of the other gonna, conspirators it's gonna come out that she was paid mm-hmm to break that story it's not going to look good it's like ooh, it's no. tampering so yeah. that's and bonnie be... willis will go after that once this is done oh she certainly will <laughs> so no. good observation good psychic observation there arthur you have to be mr magoon i just got to get a reading from this guy he's phenomenal <laughs> grazie um pam hello arthur and mel my two favorite people. Well, I'm sure you have a longer list than that. <laughs> no, let's let's just let's keep the list. Okay, there. okay. <laughs> Do you see any tornadoes in Northwest Indiana this summer? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of tornadic activity, even here in Illinois, like in the Chicago area. We're going to get hit with some major tornadoes. Um, and that's scary because I'm afraid of tornadoes. I was in one back in 1974, but I have a basement. So that's good. news. When I was a kid, we lived in Indianapolis and I'll never forget. There was these, like the tornadoes coming, tornadoes coming. And my parents were like, yeah, what? it's like away. But as a kid, you think it's right next door. I was like in the bottom of this closet underneath the staircase and like, you know, what are you doing? It's like the hurricane, they're out, you know, tornado. Why aren't you anybody here? You know, when I hear the sirens, I head to the basement. Yeah. yeah. Because if you up on you and you don't even know in the daytime, you can see them, but at night, forget about it. Yeah. And sometimes when they first start, you can't because they don't have debris. <laughs> so, yeah. and then you start hearing the wicked witch. I know. <laughs> So, well, that's really about the questions I have. Do you have I've any? Got I've got one here. Okay. Um, oh, there was something else I have to bring up. Sorry. I've been getting a lot of people writing me asking in my personal life, do, do I see Harry becoming the king? And when I started looking into it, it's they're all going back to this Nostradamus quatrum where he said that the king would step down and somebody would that's not brought up to be the king will take over. I don't see it. 
So, Wait, who's, in, who's next in line after Charles is gone? Um, William. William. Okay. I don't see... I mean, I keep picking up there's something going on with Charles's pancreas or bile duct or something. The whole liver. Or stomach area. But I think it's very serious because mm. for prostate cancer, which is treatable, you know, it's and there's nothing wrong with his prostate. But for Harry, to, I think he lives in California. Yes. But to go all the way back to Great Britain, it tells me that it was very, very serious. And the prognosis for the king is very, very poor. I do see him abdica abdicating. And I, I said this before on your show that I felt he abdicates. So that way he's around to help William. And I feel I keep, William, there's a coronation at the end of August. I keep seeing William as king and Kate as queen. So there you go. Yeah. All right. I've got a question here. Go for it. All right. I think I oh New Forest. I can't say new New Forest. I can't see the first part of it. Okay, this is a good one. This is a really good one. Can you please comment about what to expect from the UK elections in the coming year? If Labour wins, and I do see that Labour will will win, as the poll suggests, <clears throat> will they be any different than the Conservatives? Absolutely they will be. Uh, they've backtracked on so many planned policies, most recently their green agenda, and they're not even in government yet. Can they pull Britain out of its post-Brexit demise, perhaps in coalition with other parties, Greens, Libs, and Dems? I see, yes, they will. And, you know, when Britain left uh, the EU, European Union, you know, a lot of people in Great Britain were for it, but I'm like, they're going to realize they've made a huge mistake. And now they really have realized they've made a huge mistake. But at some point, I saw Great Britain back in the European Union. So, and I still do. So my feeling is Labour is going to win. And I do see them working in coalition with other parties. And so, good. <laughs> that's and, what I And I feel it'll be, it'll be a stronger Britain. Yeah, that's what I see too. Yeah. Yay. Um, and where's Benny Hill when you need won't. him? Won't. I'm moving to Britain. <laughs> no, like I said, where's Benny Hill when you need him? There you go. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's cold there in the summer. Want to be warm. <laughs> I know. It's too crazy. All righty. So um, let's see. Anything else we can touch on? Um, I think that's pretty much got it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you... You know, we have both said Biden's going to work behind closed doors to get Ukraine money. Do you right. see Ukraine getting money from us? I do. I yes. see. That yes. Gonna do that. And I heard somebody say that that the war that, you know, somebody, I don't know where it was, said that, you know, that Russia's winning that war. I see it differently. Ukraine will not give up. That was comrade Tucker Carlson basically saying that. Well, everybody, he thought that interview with Putin would be the best thing since bread and butter. I didn't watch it because I didn't want to throw up, but I heard it was boring and it didn't do what he thought it would do. And I was like, yes, because on my it. recent show, someone asked about I said that was his jump the shark moment. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Jumping in the shark like in happy days. That was it. It was downhill after that. Well, for so. Putin to say that Poland started World War II because they let Germany invade. I'm like, what is he talking about? Well, it, it, Who does it like, sound like? It's a, history. I mean, it's a misinformation and people aren't going to buy that for a nanosecond, not even people in Russia. It's like, you know, now I know where Putin, I mean, I'm sorry, now I know where Trump gets his BS lies from, you know, he just has to have people talk to Putin. <laughs> well, this is a true story. I had a client and when the whole war started, she was for it. And I'm like, are you insane? And she says, well, you do know that the Ukrainians are nothing but drug dealers and they traffic children. It's BS. And I said, and where are you getting this information? And when she told me, I said, she's a Russian oligarch's wife. Well, hello. <laughs> Living in London. So, you know, you're going to listen to that versus what the truth is. 
I hope she's changed her tune since then. Um, I know she's no longer my client. Yay. Um, I've I've said all along that Ukraine is going to get airplanes, like fighter jets, and people said no, no, no. I see them getting fighter jets. I and really I'm going to one better that and just say within two years, NATO is reaching out to Ukraine to become part of NATO. And for that to happen, the war's over. Well, they will become part of NATO, and so will Finland and uh, Sweden. I remember when um, uh, Pupkin said, <laughs> Pupkin, if, if Sweden joins and Finland joins, he would think about nuclear weapons. They joined NATO, I think, and nothing happened. Um, well, you know, you know, well, the ETs are Sweden, not going to let that happen. Sweden, by the way, when I'm on the public on the topic of Sweden, I think they elected some ultra right wing person, kind of like Trump, and blah blah blah, and they were worried about it. That person will be a one time prime minister uh, of of Sweden. That that individual is not going to last. So, yeah, I just saw a revolving door. Thank literally. you. Literally. <laughs> literally. Um, so, you know, by Trump making that statement about NATO, he, I mean, the rest of the NATO countries up in arms and it's kind of, you know, and they're worried about being able to protect themselves from Putin. But when Trump was president, he wanted to weaken NATO because my guides tell me that that Putin had this invasion planned for a very long time. That was his walking papers from Putin. Right. And if they could weaken NATO, then Putin thinks he could go in and take over the Baltic republics, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. And Putin said any country that joined NATO after 1992, he didn't recognize. Well, yeah, because a lot of those countries were the former uh, Soviet uh, Union. Uh, they were former Soviet Union or that they were satellites of the Soviet Union. Uh, and so that's why he said that, because he had planned to try to get those countries back because he wants he wants all the countries back in the former Soviet Union, but he wants to be a dictator of all that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. It's well, not. I once said on Linda's show when we were talking about Trump, I said, you have to be alive to be a president. As far as Putin's concerned, you have to be alive to be a dictator. Well, okay. Uh, um, um, political purpose. I mean, entertainment <laughs> purposes only, right? Elevating under the first floor. But I see plans. I see planes for Ukraine. Yes, I do too. Uh, and I think as we speak, the pilots for those, in the beginning, they said we can't give them the airplanes because they don't have anybody to can fly them. Oh, they've been trained. That's right. As we speak, they're being trained. And I think a lot of the Ukrainian soldiers are being trained in guerrilla warfare. So Russia is trying to do it with traditional war, and they're not going to win against a guerrilla warfare. Well, uh, also the people they're bringing in were like from prison. You can, you know, you don't have to serve your term if you go fight in a war. <laughs> They'll probably defect to the other side. And I think some of, a lot of this is being uh, funded by North Korea. Because Russia doesn't have a lot of money because it's draining the Russian economy. Exactly. So I think there's underhand. I think there's money coming from North Korea, uh, and some weapons too. <laughs> well, I, feel, I feel definitely weapons. Oh, absolutely, and money. So that'll all come out, by the way. But you know, it's funny with Kim Jong Un. He's still alive, but I don't see a long life for him either. So. <laughs> Let's hope this planetary shift takes them all with him. There you go. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> or beam them up. Yeah, right. Exactly. Send them to the next dimension. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> Do you have anything else? I mean, that's no, all that's I'm... really that's really it. And I uh, just wish everybody a wonderful Valentine's Day. If you're by yourself, treat yourself. Yay. I mean, we're going to have a chocolate soda tomorrow. I'm treating myself. I didn't wear red because I walk around so embarrassed half the time that I'm what I say I'm red faced. Well, so there you go. And if you're gonna go out and have a drink or two, don't drive. Yes. Don't be we designated want alcoholic if you don't have a designated driver. That's correct. It's called Uber or Lyft. Mm -hmm. And how do they get a hold of you, Mr. Mel? They can go to my website, 
www.meldorr.com. My brochures are on there for Africa and for the Rhine. Or they can call my office at 847-590-5411. And I've said this before, I'll say it a thousand times. If it wasn't for this wonderful man, I wouldn't be here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're with us. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know about mentally, but physically I'm here. Yeah, mentally, I took a vacation. Oh. Alone. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody asked me the name of my guides. I said, it's Manny, Moe, and Jack. So leave them alone. <laughs> like that. All right. Anything Next, else? my channel, right? Yes. Go to his channel. Like, subscribe. He has memberships. Become a member. Come to my channel, www.artheraseyourmind.com or Arthur Ease Your Mind here on YouTube. Like, subscribe. It helps our algorithms. Leave comments, please. And if they're not uh, nice, we'll just delete it. Don't worry. Right? Yeah. And um, and and I have membership starting yesterday. So I that was my Valentine to everybody. They were asking. There you go. That's one thing I won't tolerate is nasty comments in the comment section. Because when we have those, then the person, the comments deleted and they're restricted from, mm -hmm. from my YouTube channel because I don't want you know, nasty, negative comments. It That's just, not what we're about here. That's I'm sorry. not, yeah, I do the same thing. So, you know, knock yourself out. Ain't going to go anywhere. All righty. All righty. So next Tuesday on your page, my, on your channel. My channel. <laughs> okay. All right, All folks. Right. Just take care of yourself. Have fun. Take care of others. And as always, stay amazing. Bye night. Good night, Mel.